Hi everyone, welcome to our panel. That we have five, we have five guests, including not including myself. We are still waiting for the founder of the platform we are using today, Run the World. Uh, so, uh, but we will start doing a self introduction, starting from a gentleman from Japan. I think this is the first time I saw you in Horace's. Please. Um, thank you for everybody. This just uh, coming into these sessions. So my name is uh, Kohei. Uh, I'm uh, running my own not for profit association to call the Privacy by Design Lab. Uh, our association is just uh, developing a privacy data protection the cultures uh, in our domestic societies. But because uh, since the uh, COVID nineteen, we see a lot of uh, the privacy. Um, fairness. A lot of people is uh, worried about the infringement of the privacy uh, data protections. So we try to cooperate with our Japanese government and the uh, Japanese corporations um, to uh, educate the corporate cultures, the corporate transformations, uh, be a protective the consumer privacy, consumer first. Um, the, we try to cooperate with other countries, such as the Asian countries, where and in Singapore, the other uh, Eastern Asia and China, and South Korea, uh, because we see a lot of uh, transformations, uh, the data societies. So our mission is to try to bridge the people and working it together for a more democratic data society in the future. Yeah, nice. How about Bianca? Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Bianca. Oh, I'm hearing a lot of echo here. Yeah, it's been great to be able to communicate with everyone here. I am the Senior Vice President of Marketing of Newag.com. Newag is a large online B2B2C e-commerce company focusing on computer components and consumer electronics products. The headquarters is based in Los Angeles um, with annual sales close to $3 billion. It's very nice to be able to talk to everyone here today. Okay, so thank you, Bianca. How about Rishi? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Rishi Mehra. I founded Vishwin.com in 2016. Vishwin.com is a fintech company in India which helps consumers take the right uh, decision to buy what kind of a credit and we help consumers uh, run their financial services and get them a good deal in, in loans. Uh, the whole idea of Wishwin was there is wishes and the finance. The idea was that people can manage their debt well so that they can have a better understanding of debt and they can take these credits uh, online if they can do that. Yeah, so uh, previously before that, I founded two companies, sold them to a listed companies in India. So it's my third venture. Hopefully this will do well too. Thank you so much and very nice to be part of this group. All right, so thank you. I, I saw we have a very special guest joining us finally, the founder from Rum the World. We are doing a self introduction. So you're the next, next one. So now we go back to uh, how you enter. Hi, Hi. Uh, hey, you hear me? Yes. Awesome. So a pleasure to be here. Uh, looking forward to the uh, exchanging the thoughts. So uh, I'm founder and CEO of a startup called Aluxio. So we are a uh, uh, technology company, uh, build a software which can help uh, any company uh, better leverage the data, particularly for data analytics, machine learning workloads, and uh, lots of the, our customers join us in the cloud. And today, uh, majority of the uh, fortune, uh, majority of the global, uh, uh, like our customers focusing on global 2000, particularly lots of uh, fortune 500. And uh, in, two, in around 10 days, we actually have our own conference. This year is virtual because of COVID-19. And you can see lots of leading companies like Amazon, uh, Alibaba, uh, Tencent, Com uh, Comcast, uh, et cetera, uh, uni China Unicom, Rakuten, uh, this type of company are presenting how they are leveraging our technology uh, to better leverage the data, uh, get the value from the data. So because of the space we're in, uh, which, is uh, which is based on the digitization of these enterprise companies, 
uh, the trend of the digital economy as well as the uh, company digitalization is very important to us. And uh, again, uh, pleasure to be here and looking forward to the conversation. All right, thank you, Hao Yuan. So um, our final guest, like um, founder of Run the World. Uh, sorry for the delay. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, this is Xiao Yin. I'm the founder and CEO of Run the World. Uh, we started the company actually a year ago before COVID. Uh, to, at that time, my, my mom was from China, so she had never been to an international conference. It was really hard for her to travel and get visa and, and, and be at an international conference. Uh, so it was a great experience for her the first time fl fl flying to Chicago and meet a bunch of doctors, but it's really hard for her. So at that time, I was thinking, what if we digitize the whole event uh, so my mom can meet other doctors more often? Uh, at that time, it was still a pretty stupid idea <laughs> by most people. And I guess thanks to COVID, uh, we kind of launched the week before COVID hits. Uh, and we can immediately see a lot of interest. Uh, now, you know, we kind of grew a team of around 50 across U.S., uh, Europe and Asia. Uh, and so thank you so much for coming to Around the World for this event. Super honor. All right. So we have a very perfect... Oh, by the way, I'm Louis. Uh, I'm the CEO of the Pacific Founder Venture, which is a VC who invests early stage uh, startup in Asia. So currently I have uh, eight companies in my portfolio across the education, logistics, finances, property tech as well. So uh, this is my fifth time hosting a uh, panel in Paris. I have to say this is the most relevant speaker I have on my panel. So I'm expecting this will be a very uh, con con uh, very contributed uh, uh, discussion. And also I put up a poll, you know, I try every function on around the world. I think it's better than Zoom between you and all of us. Um, so yeah. I mean, our topic is very funny, quite in general. I don't think 45 minutes will be enough, but I'll try to get the insight from every guesses. So I will start by uh, Japan. Like, um, what is the innovation or the digital uh, transformation by by communication during the coronavirus pandemic? So I guess uh, we can share uh, one or two minutes how uh, daily life was affected, the business uh, uh, activity, and then, yeah, the second part of the question, I really don't know how to respond because they said I need to preserve a caution towards the innovation. I, I think we spend more time on talking about how our own region innovated instead of our, our concern. So, yeah, starting from Japan, please. Uh, sure, thank you for the uh, first questions. Um, and the Japanese society has been changed since our the prime minister uh, new assigned uh, in the recent months. So we uh, try to uh, focus in on the digital transformations, uh, the the society driven, um, especially like uh, medicals, the uh, the government operations, the corporate structures. Uh, we have been arguing in this part since almost uh, some years, but still we haven't decided any directions. Um, but the problem is uh, it's not just the technologies, right? It's just a kind of the politicalness uh, in the operations uh, because a lot of uh, corporations, the government is uh, just made the directions uh, how we can make a digital transformations uh, the Japanese case, we started this uh, discussions uh, from the uh, almost two decades ago, but still not existing. This is a very big problem. Why it happens? Uh, all the operational practice is, is not going well. Uh, even though we have a big pictures, we didn't make a practice. At this time, we try to change the, the, the internal cultures, not just uh, uh, making a, a vertical actions, we try to make in a horizontal, we try to make the break in a zero. So th those are kind of the one uh, typical innovations what we are facing at this moment. Uh, so th this is a very uh, significance uh, for us to make in a fast actions. The, the, the second is to try to cooperate uh, with the uh, the global rebels, the uh, break in the zeros. So, th so that's why I'm betting on the uh, data parts. The data is the critical for the digital transformations in the futures. All right. So are you in general saying Japan have put a lot of effort making 
announcement, suggestion, but the implementation and execution is still on the air or True. what? Okay. Yeah, yeah. there was. Yeah, because Asia have the first outbreak, like ma massive outbreak on a cruise from Japan, right? The Prince Diamond. That one was yeah. horrible. But I guess that by, by then, like, Japan controlled quite well. I think today is a significant milestone. China and Japan is getting a travel bu bubble by today, right? Yeah. Like this is traveled by today. So we can travel to Japan without quarantine mm -hmm. for today. Yeah, yeah ho ho hopefully this could be so well. I, I think this is just an experiment. Mm. Uh, so we try to do the many things to accelerate the economy, the gains. Because we are in a stagnant, we need to see how we can take in the balances, uh, the safety incentive. So this is then a situation that try to make uh, the abbreviations in the between the specific countries to countries, the uh, transfer in the people's operations. Uh, one small question, because I still didn't get an actual change from the daily life of the citizen from Japan. May I ask, do you guys travel for business by train or by airplane more after the pandemic or just driving by yourself? Uh, it, it depends on the situations. Uh, like domestically? Yeah, I, I think the, uh, in the domestic economy, uh, we, we are in a like, granular at the times. Uh, the for first uh, pandemic situations, the government is to try to save our uh, daily activities the, because of the uh, saving the numbers. Uh, but the ones that we are alleviated of the numbers, they try to uh, like give uh, opportunities to use the, some parts of the incentive, just to, uh, uh, kind of to go to any travel to other states or uh, go to the uh, any restaurants, the stores um, to buy or purchase any things. Um, however, so we are in a, facing a, the second of the waves of the very big pandemic situations. Uh, at the times, uh, the the people is uh, try to save their actions to go outside the the ma making any uh, behaviors. Uh, in accordance with those trends, uh, the, we will see the, the less and less uh, the utilities of uh, public transformations. So those companies, the layway is uh, facing a very challenging situations because the people uh, is reluctant to go outside using uh, those uh, public transformations. Um, the public means they need to uh, run in a normally. Uh, but the problem is they need the learning cost. So they have to the, try to take in the balances, the ROI, even uh, they are recognized as a, a public alternative for them. Uh, so I think that this is a very big challenge for those old transformations, uh, such as the uh, the Japanese airplane companies needs the public support uh, because uh, they just uh, uh, have in the learning cost in a very big uh, physical, uh, airplane. So this is a very big burden for them. So yeah, many things did change in these times. Okay, so uh, I guess Japan represent a very cold, a caution uh, 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 races or of or, or ecosystem. Japan has always been doing well in health and also the technology. So I guess more caution, more more suggest, more more measures coming out. But I would love to hear more about India first before we go into China, America, because India have the most populated, dense uh, like uh, situations in India, and then all the media haven't truly honest present what happened in India. So we are dying to know more truth or unspeakable truth from India side first. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Uh, yeah. So uh, let us talk about India. So India, as you mentioned, we are very densely populated. We are the largest population just behind China. Uh, maybe we'll overtake them in this space for sure shot. Uh, the, this is, was the two things. And then COVID hit. Uh, government reacted really well in the start phases of it, saying, you know, putting quarantine lockdowns as early as possible as they realized. Uh, and to put India into a lockdown is a very difficult thing to do because the kind of population and the kind of infrastructure or consumer behavior to do things across. 
uh, we as a society are meant to get together for festivals we are society meant together to meet each other etc much more than the other societies and there is families uh, you know we have a culture where uh, we about 10 12 people live together all their lives together so from that in uh, from that point of time when covid hit uh, there were two things right there was uh, the the indian government tried to put india onto digital economy from 2016 2017 by doing measures of digital payment or demonetization etc on that front so these were two key infrastructural changes in india because before that cash was the king and actually thinking to in india to going without cash was not possible be- before that time now when you look covid hit in india so uh, the digital things had to be done and there was uh, you know uh, infrastructure issues in terms of having internet having phones and having the ability to deliver at home now all these three things uh, uh, quickly uh, in a country with a scale like that and with the infrastructure like that uh, i think the attempt was but over a period of a month or 45 days uh the supply chains did not uh, you know they lasted so everybody in india or every city in india got essentials which was a very difficult thing to imagine before covid because we had seen earlier in 2000 uh, you know 90 or 1990s and 2000 that uh, whenever there was some disruption happened some cities never got food etc etc on that front now when you talk about uh, what is what is required and what is how do you behave across on that front so uh, so what happened is that uh, digital economy wise in terms of you know banks getting to digital level paying get, get, uh, getting you infrastructure be able to get you cash or able to get you accept digital payments or able to give you credit there was much lag it was there and everybody is trying but we've not uh, you know even reached 10% or 20% in terms of getting credit across on that front so yes uh, that's a point of view we Uh, we got hit very badly in terms of numbers even after early lockdowns and the kind of uh, you know the kind of uh, uh, the kind of uh, the death rate is still lower in india but in terms of total numbers is much higher and having the infrastructure to even test which wasn't there in a country like india uh, now you talk, when we talk about uh, the government response uh, yes they tried whatever they could but implementation as i think was uh, was about 30 to 40% that should have happened uh, now when you talk about in terms of how the economy has revived and how how the behavior is is happening is, is that infrastructure wise the uh, the changes uh, in india very quickly happen in the ed- education tech field because a lot more companies understood and and a lot of tech companies understood that they would have to have the education available online and and have the infrastructure uh, available online so that there are many students who can go access and for that having uh, infrastructure in terms of laptops or having infrastructure in terms of having the bandwidth of internet there has been some innovation and that's what's happening across on that front so india is more about how the infrastructure is available to that so that is available to the masses during the pandemic is the first step which i think has been done really well now if you talk about if you have to compare to the economies of the different world where they have taken the next steps so uh, so that's still you know that's still required and still we are very far off cross i think the two places where done well is because of things like uh, uh, you know so we had done good in terms of having the education available to uh, to a lot of kids uh, to new thoughts of education happening online uh, the telemedicine industry really took cross well because people didn't wanted to go out and meet doctors and wanted to have it that so that has done well i think the third is that the e-commerce to get things at home uh, the infrastructure remained well but rest other is all 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 under uh, to the process yeah All right. Thank you for very detailed in, uh, from Indian side. I guess one major change is also not because of pandemic. Indian application have a lot of like opportunity because they ban a lot of China, like China applications. So I think many many customers change their uh, user behavior to more local domestic 
I don't I don't think it's just uh, for China, right? Because uh, they they release a, a lot of loyal customers, so people tend to find new application to use, right? So they have a lot of good opportunity for startup for a app a startup company. So yeah, I I would love to because I, unfortunately I didn't invest any comp- China company in India. But yeah, I think it's a great idea, just like what China did to Facebook and Google before. So yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. India, um, I mean, media try to exaggerate it, the situation. I've been to India like several times. I think they have their own culture doing their own measure to control. Oh, I, by the way, I saw the pool. Actually, this one of us actually travel overseas. I mean, yeah, my God, you're so, so brave. But uh, after we have some insight in India, I would like to share some of the four with three of our guests because three of them are all from the West Coast of your state, right? Bianca from West Coast as well, right? And, 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 and yeah, that, so how can we separate the, the, the four? So do you want to start talking about like particular your industry, maybe that e-commerce and also the online like uh, e-meeting platform, like, um, yeah, so it's all yours. Like, I don't <laughs> how to share. I mean, uh, there's a lot of difference between the state, right? Like the mid- Midwest, the East, the West. But unfortunately, we don't have anyone from Midwest. Like Wisconsin do this re- recounting for the poll for Trump and Biden, and Biden have more poll. So it's very funny. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um I don't know, you know, it's interesting to hear we were talking about um, how the digital technologies have been changing and evolving and causing a lot of positive impact in Japan and in India. I've been always thinking that there is no like real one Asia that economies are vastly different between Japan and Korean versus China, Indonesia and India. And I've been always thinking that compared to Japan, the Korea, that China, Indonesia, and India are actually, you know, the biggest market and areas that I've been constantly seeing the great innovation and the great changes happening there. Today, in many ways, I think Asian has a completely leapfrogged the West in adoption of digital technologies, you know, our Western economies that we saw in the evolution from local stores to the um, out of town shopping center and then shift to e-commerce. I think like companies like India and China, they don't have that mid step, which is out of town shopping center unless you're in the tier one, you know, metropolitan cities. So the result is they, they jumped just directly from the local store to the e-commerce. So the penetration of the e-commerce is so much higher versus in, in the U.S. Um, this COVID-19 in the past nine to 10 months in the U.S., talking from my industry, which is B2B to C, um, we start, Newark started from B2C, completely pure B2C e-commerce model 20 years ago. Today, we offer both first party and marketplace business model. But since the pandemic of COVID-19, I've clearly see a few trends, which is like really interesting. And it clearly indicates that we are actually trying to adopt the digital technologies, which has been evolving and developing in China. So the first thing is, in the past nine to 10 months, we've been heavily leverage TikTok and online stream to help a consumer understand how to shop from us, especially those who recently just started shopping online, you know, in the US, which turns out to be very successful and useful. That's quite interesting to me, especially because I'm in charge of marketing. Those are the two emerging media that we've seen the biggest growth in the past nine to 10 months. Then the other interesting to me is different from the expectation that customers going to flood in and buying consumer electronics, especially, you know, the mobile devices, including the notebooks. The biggest growth in terms of the products is actually core components groups, including CPU, motherboard, VGA core and case. 
telling you that a lot of U U U.S. consumers they're still actually building their desktop systems, which is you know very rare today. And unless you're a gamer in Asia, especially in China, a lot of people have multiple mobile devices and notebooks versus a lot of U.S. customers are still trying to build their desktops. And obviously, Newegg has been benefiting a lot from it. The other trend we've also seen is, of course, you know, traffic and sales from mobile devices and mobile applications have been significantly increased.、Um, and I also think that, despite of that, you know, tariff sanctions that the U.S. is putting for China.、Um, This digital technology in the future have made actually the worldwide trade largely immune to the sanctions that U.S. government is trying to put for Asian and especially for China. So so far, these are you know my key takeaways and observations from the U.S. Yeah, funny mention like before the the the, the panel started, like、uh, Bianca always also mentioned、uh, during the logistic sector, they have implemented、uh, a quota, right, a limitation for each merchant how many,、uh, how many stock, how many weighted of a com、uh, commodity they can ship out for a certain time in order to、yeah. evenly distribute the right to 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 do business. Which、yeah. is, I thought that was very communist. <laughs> no, I have no <laughs> idea. It should be like a market mechanism. Whoever pay more, I mean, and then you, of course you can have two bundle,、yeah. right? For the medical device, of course you're doing this, but for commercial wise, I think people at that point need something. They willing to pay more. That should be that way. So I'm surprised. I'm very surprised for that.、Yeah. I think it was the biggest challenge and, and changes during the coronavirus for business wise, right? I never heard about it. That's why I buy a book who who reveal the the dirty secret of Trump. Like I think the formal like、uh, advisor for security measure.、Yeah. It take one and half month for me to ship out from Washington D.C. to Hong Kong and China. Like one point five month. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I really think our infrastructure is not ready to support the large scale of. The online B two C commerce, especially this, you know, pandemic of COVID nineteen, has clearly indicated that. You know, that's why I think there are so many different things that Western economies can learn, and using what's been developing and evolving in Asia as a as a good case study. You know, there are like using your word, there are a lot of communist things. <laughs> Happening in the U.S., you know, with the turmoil of our, you know, politics presidential election. All right, thank you, Bianca. Yeah, yeah. So I think e-commerce they have a lot of discussion. So anyone who wants more to know more, welcome to connect with Bianca after the Thanksgiving bus. Like I'm still、oh. very busy, I think. And I would love to hear more、uh, from、uh, Hao Yuan because I, from your introduction and your self introduction. <laughs> I think you are doing something like Dropbox or a sharing system, or what? Like, I mean, still confusing. So, yeah, it's a it's a Dropbox is very uh, uh, to end user uh, okay uh, type of、so、a product. And what we do is that essentially we build a distributed software,、uh, very scalable, very large scale, so that、uh, become the backbone of the、uh, largest enterprises、uh, for their internal data. Uh, sharing as well as uh, uh, leveraging data for analytical workloads as well as machine learning AI workloads. For example, like、uh, some of the banks using our、uh, software, they build applications like how to refill the ATM and what's a route for the refill AT ATM, and、uh, that's an example for the banking.、Uh, for the、uh, telecommunication, they do customer three hundred and sixty on top of our software, leveraging the data they have. Like e-commerce, like Alibaba, JD,、uh, Rakuten,、uh, this type of company, they do customer study,、uh, recommendation, fraud detection, all those top, all those type of applications on top of us. So we are a very B two B type of company, and uh, we uh, uh, we um, our customers are typically 
the largest enterprise in the world, uh, even though uh, we have users uh, across the different spectrum as well. So uh, because of that, uh, we observe that, like you see, uh, our most advanced customers, they are typically the most advanced digitized uh, company. Uh, they are very data driven, like uh, as I mentioned, Alibaba, Amazon, like Google, Facebook, they are all using our technology. And uh, because of that, we interact with these type of companies a lot and try to learn and uh, try to learn by having a conversation as well as providing more in our software, uh, pro uh, integrating more value into our software and providing those value to our users. And uh, Bianca came from Newax and it's an e-commerce company and uh, majority of the top 10 e-commerce in the world today, they are running our uh, technology. And I think five, six of the top 10 e-commerce, they have the case study actually uh, on our website today. So uh, that's who we are and what we do. Um, because of that, I would like to uh, talk about this topic from two different angles. One, I want to talk simply purely from the digital economy. Secondly, uh, I uh, want to provide some observation we have from the COVID uh, influence. So regarding the digital economy, uh, we believe it is the trend and it is the future. Uh, in, a, in a sense of for the next 20 to 30 years, we don't know what's happening after that. Uh, but for the next 20 to 30 years, it, we see it's, uh, an uh, it is for sure all these companies will become more digitized and then leverage the data they have and try to use the data they got to bring a better, uh, to bring better service to their customers to improve their own business. And essentially, it's two stage. One is that they use the data to help them make the decision. And the second stage is that you, you, they use the data and algorithm to make the decisions for them. And to some degree, if you go to all these e-commerce today, you make a macro loan, all those are decided by the application and the algorithms. It's not human behind the desk and making approval every time. And uh, that's the... That's the way we look at it. And then it goes down to, Bianca mentioned, like every single country have a different economy. And uh, if a country is big enough and different provinces or states in the country, they also have a different economy as well. So, but from our perspective, no matter uh, how the economy is today, the trend is that they got to leverage the digital uh, and digitalization uh, of their whole economy to be more efficient and to be more competitive in this global market. And it's just a speed of one country or one company is probably doing better or faster than the other country, than the other company. And because of where they are, the resource they have, and the thinking process, uh, the thought process they have. So that's, we be, it's, it's, it's one way. It's, it's not like people decide to go forward or go backward. It's just forward. And just to, it, 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 the, the only difference is the speed of going forward. That's about the digital economy uh, in our review. And then come back to this COVID-19 of this 2020. So we see... I mean, it's a very unfortunate event and uh, uh, lots of people are uh, like many people died from it. It's very, very unfortunate. It's sad from that perspective. But at the same time, it is also uh, speeded up a uh, certain country or certain companies digitalization uh, like like roadmap. And we can see like I live in uh, California, like uh, the uh, the e-commerce or, or like, uh, um, uh, you can ease, you can, you can order food much easier, much easier than before. And before we have to go to the restaurant and food delivery service was pretty bad, particularly compared with China or Asia. And now because it's COVID and that got significantly improved. 
And that's just a small piece of it. And I think what's more important is the people's expectation、uh, got changed, and people's standard got changed, and people embrace this new way of working and new way of life. And from our perspective, like we do,、uh, as I mentioned, to be business, and sometimes we sign、uh, million dollar customers. And typically, for this type of a、uh, like business, in the past,、uh, you gotta travel. You gotta travel to another country. You meet a customer, and、uh, you shake the hand. You, you see each other. You believe you trust each other. You can be partnered together. You got it done. And today,、uh, because this、uh, like COVID made the tra- travel really really hard, and you just couldn't do that anymore. And we can use the platform. Uh, like run the world, uh, uh, Xiaoyun provided and her team provided, as well as the other software like Slack, like Zoom, to have a video conversation, and people are expecting each other just have a video conversation to build a trust today, and to be much more efficient in terms of this type of a virtual, uh, like uh, like conversation, uh, than before, and、uh, I. I think in that way it is just much more effective than before. You don't need to just、uh, we just signed a, a very big customer, probably top ten company in U,、uh, UK、uh, this week or last week. You, if you are in Asia, so、uh, so before I had to fly to London, and this time we just got it done、uh, over this Zoom、uh, conversations and do a docu sign and.、Uh, And、uh, using a cell phone, you got a, a multi-million dollar、uh, like、uh, deal done. So, which is unimaginable before. And、uh, for that, I truly appreciate uh, uh, this type of、uh, advancement uh, of dig- digitization, Fur- further digitization, particularly from the uh, communication uh, perspective. And all this will further drive the overall digitization. Look, all people are talking online today. And、uh, guess what? Zoom will have more data. Slack will have more data. Like ISP will have more data, and、uh, around the world will have start to, started to collect data as as well. And all this becomes a foundation of they can better leverage the data,、uh, and in most cases for good. So uh, that's a uh, that's our view, and uh, uh, our uh, our company as well as some our.、Uh, Like、uh, partners' company, friends' company, they have seen because of this,、uh, if the company is built on top digital economy, actually they got a uh, uh, stronger uh, performance this year compared with the last year, and、uh, we, we appreciate that, and、uh, we just want to、uh, go faster.、Uh, and of course, we、uh, like now I don't need to fly、uh, many many times a year.、Uh, it's I think it's better for my health. But at the same time, I do miss some part of the travel, and I look forward to、uh, some of the traveling、uh, coming up as well. Let's say、uh, that's our perspective. Thank you, thank you,、uh, Hao Yuan. So I think everyone miss travel. I during the 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 panel, I have been doing pool. I love the pool because that's very interactive. So the last one was kind of funny. I thought many one don't like it because the compulsory quarantine. But actually, we are all chicken. We are very afraid of getting the corona virus. So, yeah. So,、um, anyway, I was trying to open run the conference at this panel by five four minutes because I want to give the floor to to Xiaoying more. So,、um, anyone who want to stay in order to listen more, I will put my my insight at the last five minute over running the the, the, the supposedly ending time. So. It's all sure, Xiaoying. So fine, I, you I, wouldn't be shut down. You can still take the time. <laughs> well, you're still recording, right? I'm I'm sending the、yep. video to. It's recording. Yeah. <laughs> you finally put your camera straight to your face, but usually I just want to take the screen. Screen is all just like half. <laughs> or it's it's all yours. Great.、Uh, so thank you so much.、Uh, so you know the funny thing is that when I first started the company,、uh, it was before COVID, so there were still. Uh, conferences in the physical world, but the problem that I see was,、uh, you know, people are really it's really hard for people to travel, and、uh, and plus you have a three day conference、uh, that's really large,、uh, but you're probably only interested in 
uh, one 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 tenth of the, con- the content or you know one tenth of the people that you're meeting, but you have to spend all of those hours to go to a conference. Uh, so uh, for us, I think the future of w- what run the world is going is to really help uh, enabling more events uh, that are easier to to build, and also enabling more people who are otherwise not a professional event organizer uh, can run their own events too and bring their own community together. So that's that is behavior that we we thought. That will happen maybe in the next five years, but COVID kind of accelerate this. Uh, so when we first launched the company, obviously it was uh, almost a hundred percent conferences that are canceled trying to move online. Uh, but it's been kind of eight months since we launched, and we, we're observing a lot of new behaviors. We're seeing a lot of um, companies, the owners themselves, uh, the thought leaders, the community leaders, are, are who are never running any physical conference before. They have an online following, a newsletter, uh, a Slack channel. Uh, something like that. And they're just thinking even as a new way of, of engaging their community, just like how they did it with podcasts or with, with blog posts or with, with uh, TikTok, uh, is, except the only difference is that uh, everybody get to participate and they can meet each other. Uh, so, so that's something that we kind of have observed. Uh, it's, it's, it, we're still in the very beginning of that phase. We're seeing more people saying, hey, uh, I have a bunch of customers. Um, like I have an enterprise company. I have many customers. How do I engage uh, my customer?" Before, I would probably invite them to a sports game. Now I can just do a cocktail party uh, online and invite everybody there. Uh, I'm an influencer. Uh, before, I have a newsletter and blog post, and people subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, now I can charge for a premium uh, master class where people can come and mingle with me. So those are some of the new behavior we're seeing, and we're actually increasing our investment uh, in making uh, more people uh, create their events in an easier way. Uh, so that's the first trend we see. Uh, the second trend we see is that the events uh, format has changed dramatically. Uh, eight months ago, it was replicating the physical conferences. Uh, so at that time, customers say, I want you know three expo halls and uh, four stages and 10 parallel sessions. And uh, what we have observed is that the format just doesn't work. You, know, you have uh, 5,000 people registering for your event. Each hour, uh, you have maybe 50 people showed up because the events is really spread out. Uh, even this one, I would say there's still somewhat of a spread out audience. So uh, instead, we're seeing people saying, wait a minute, why do we have a conference once a year? Uh, well, it's because in the physical world, it's really hard to make everybody travel. Uh, but now it's so easy. And plus, no one can stay in front of their computer for 10 hours straight. Uh, then why are we doing this? Why can't we make this into an annual membership model where every, every week or every two weeks, uh, we have a few hours that everybody gather uh, and they are having a really engaging time uh, and then they leave. Uh, and the next week they come back again for some other topics. So those are some of the new models that I, that's kind of what I believe will be the future in, in the next few years uh, is to is to see a fewer and fewer like large scale uh, three day conferences that no one get to meet each, anybody. It's going to be more recurring events that can help people build community. So those are kind of the two things we observe and we kind of believe in. Uh, I guess the, obviously the third thing is that we're seeing, uh, you know, more uh, p- people are still needing more engagement. That's why we're building all of those polls and uh, and cocktail party. I think that's still the, the biggest pain point online is that, uh, you know, you used to have a lot of engagement physically, but you are lacking those engagement with kind of webinars online. Uh, but we actually think that we can do better than physical world. In the physical world, when you are socializing with other people, uh, you don't really know who wants to talk to you. Uh, and uh, it's really awkward to try to reach out to somebody and they kind of ignore you. Um, so we actually think that there's a better chance for us uh, to optimize this and give more people uh, abilities to interact with each other because we have more data on, hey, they both want to talk to each other with, hey, they both share something in common, or hey, but they, they both have the same objective. We could do a better job of matchmaking the most relevant people uh, instead of, you know, wandering around the large convention center trying to figure out who you want to talk to next. So uh, those are the things that we believe that can be better uh, than, than the physical ex- experiences. Uh, so those are kind of the three observations. Uh, I'll say like high level for us uh, on a company standpoint, uh, we started uh, last year. So we had five people uh, eight months ago. Uh, now we have 45 people. Uh, so it's kind of almost 10x the, the team, but I haven't met most of my team in person. So we're a company that was being forced to scale remotely uh, simply because we couldn't do this without that option. Uh, so now basically we shut down our office. We used to have an office in Mountain View with five people. We shut it down. Uh, and now we just do it entirely remotely, hiring across the world. So for us, it's like we're a company 
that it's not like everyone knows each other physically. Now they're forced to stay at home. Is is a company that no one knows each other uh, and they never see each other. They probably will never see each other unless they travel together. So uh, how to build a company with culture that works uh, for such team where you don't even know how tall your coworker uh, are. So I think that's the, the challenge that we're trying to face. But at the same time, it is, it's just what the company was set up to be. Uh, there's a new generation of 